Hello everyone. Um, good day. So I'll be walking you through how to consolidate payroll data using Power Query. As you know, we're in a period where um about to find annual returns, and one of the critical things that we done is consolidating your payroll data across multiple worksheets. My name is Oladi Rudwimi. Now here's a sample data of a typical payroll height to look like. Um, critical things you need to pay attention to is the consistency in the naming convention used throughout your payroll data. So this is a list of employees, right, which you have in between column A and column B. And this is the gross salary basic all the way to um, the net pay, total tax pay, and yeah, all the way down. Now we have that for eight months, January to August, yeah? Now, now, and you see that the data is kind of consistent. Now, once you've made to put this data together um, in one workbook, right, the next thing is to use Power Query to consolidate all this data together. So I'll walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how this is done. So the next step is I would save this data. I'll open a new worksheet, right? Um, so I can close this sample data. Now, yeah. So within my data ribbon, I can get data sources. I want to get it from a file. And the file is from an Excel workbook. It's loading. So I pick it from my sample data, right? Um, so this is sample data which I want to import. So I'm importing it data. So I wait for um, Excel to connect to data source. Now what I basically do is, if you notice, on the sample period data had multiple sheets, right? So just pick one of them. I'm not interested in all of them at the same time, right? Now this is what it's telling me is going to look like. Um, so I'm going to tell Excel to transform this data. And what the next phase, what I'm going to do is try to some element of clean the data. So I click on transform data. Now, so it brings me to an editor that, that will help me in clean up data. Now, typically what I want is for it to bring out all the sheets. Now, now, which is the source. I don't need my change type. I don't need my promoted headers. I don't need navigation. Now, if you look at this, this is similar to the sheets I'm interested in, right? Um, the two columns I'm interested in is my column A, which is ABC, the sheet name, and the data itself. I don't need all the other ones. So I simply just select the two columns, right click, and remove other columns. So I'm left with just these two columns. Now, once I'm done with that, you'll see this button at the top. It helps me expand the data. So that means it doesn't just show me the table in summary, but it shows me the table in a detailed form. So let me move this column to this side. Let me carry this column to this side. Yeah. So it brings me data in a, some, in a full form, right? So I just click on this. Yeah. And I click OK. Now, what you would see is that just scrolling through your col my first column, you see January. Keep scrolling down. February. March. April, May, June. So I have all my data, right? But what you notice is that from my raw data, my first six columns or five columns were not data relating to the actual data itself. So for example, see this. Now for me to, because what I'm doing here is cleaning up the data. What I'll just basically tell Excel to do is I can easily select this and unselect null, meaning I'm telling it to not consider anything that is null and I'll click OK, yeah? So that we have told Excel, take out that data. I don't need it. Now, the next one is that my name of this table, I want it to be this first line. If you notice, this was the name that came across my data we're looking at, right? Yeah, so I have this. And that's what I want to tell Excel to do. So I'll simply just say, use my first row as headers, right? Which is what you're seeing here. 
and I just click on it. Yeah, now you notice that the name has changed, right, to what my first row data was. So I can easily now change this. This particular one, I don't want it to be January, so I double click on it and just put months. So that way I have only my month data, right? So you see this now. So this is basically showing me my actual data on um, January. And if I go to the end, right, to the bottom, scroll down all the way to the bottom, June, scroll down. Yeah, so I can see that I have it all the way to August. So it means that I have all my columns right uh, all my sheets already imported here but one thing you notice is that you remember that we had um the first row that i converted into the header you see it again in within the data source so what on excel to do now is um power query to do is take out that other element so if you notice that was first name right so if i click on it so every place with that first name which is repeated in every sheet i say it should not include it so i don't tick it and i click ok right so i also clean now now this data is almost perfect. Um, so it depends on what other feature you want to do. So for example, in this particular scenario, I have my first name and last name. I may want to combine it as one name, right? So you can, which I can now call it as name, right? Because most times critical thing in most consolidating payroll, most times that is important to have a unique name, right? Um, when I say unique name, I'm saying something that identify each employee. Now in some cases, it could be a case of first name, last name. Right, in some case, it to be an employee name as employee ID, right? If your payroll has that, it makes it very easy to be able to consolidate, right? So that way, so depending on it, um, you may want to have that. And that critical thing you need to pay attention to is that the names need to be consistent also, right? Not that in month January, your name is Oladele Dubemi, and in February, your name is Oladele Adedayo. Right. Um, so those names will be consistent. So you need to also ensure that those data are actually correct. Yeah. So one of the next steps I would like to do is also merge these two, right? So I can select these two columns, right? And right click on it. Right. And I can easily click on merge, right? Merge columns here. Yeah. So I would now replace it with a name, right? Um, so let's say name, for example. So I want the separator between the two of them to be space. And I want to call that, um, call it maybe full name. Yeah, and I can close it. So that way I have uh, my first name and last name as one column, yeah? So it introduces a new that, can you see? Full name, so everybody's combined as one. Now. The name of this particular query, I want to give it a name so that at any point in time, when I want to do this. So if you notice, this is January to August. So if I add so um September, October, November, all I need to do is recall this query and to go through this process of cleaning everything on and doing that. Even next year, right? All I need, I'm not going to repeat the process again. All I, if I have the data in that worksheet, all I need to do is call this query and to do that. So I'll call it consolidating payroll. Yeah, and I have that. So now that I'm done with that, all I need to just do is close and load data. So at this point, what would happen is that it basically just exports my data into an Excel worksheet, right? And let's wait for Excel to do the magic. Exactly. Now for those who are, you see that January, it shows the month and it shows all the data, right? All the way to August. And if, for example, we can even just even try it, right? And you, you see Excel do is magic. Yeah, Let, let's do that. So let's add a new, um, let's add two more of this, right? So let's create September, or let's just, just create one, just September. So let's call this September. September. 
So that means you have a new data, um, a new payroll for a particular month called September. So if you notice, right, um, we have up to August and you see that we have a total of 464 rows. Yeah. Now we've added a new month, which is September. So by just right clicking here, similar to what happens in uh, Power Pivot, oh, sorry, um, yeah, Power Pivot, right. I just click a ref the refresh. Okay, all right, the worksheet is still open, right? And my data source, so let me close my data source so that doesn't happen. I can simply do that now, okay? And I do my refresh. Can you see that's increased from 464 to 522? Yeah. And if I go down, it has included September. Tada! so I already have all my data and all the names combined, right? Um, so with this, I have like all my data combined. The only thing now is that the names have been repeated, right? I could do that other element from Power Query, but let's just take it to Power Pivot, which everybody's familiar with, and we can do that to um, sort out the data finally. So the next piece is basically just um, doing the, um, using Power Pivot to basically summarize the data, right? So which I can under my inserts, Pivot from table array, All right? A new worksheet, okay. And what I'm interested in is my full name. Yeah. Um, I can bring in each of each of the other data, right? Um, in my sorry, full name in terms of my rows. Then I can bring in each of the other data into my pivot. I didn't call column nine. Utility. Pension. Yeah. Net pay and the total tax paid. Those are the figures I need. Yeah, exactly. So now with this, I can now go ahead to now recompute um my P, right, and confirm that what the company has actually done in terms of PE deductions is the same as what I expect based on the gross salary earned by that employee for the full year. And if there are differences, I can tell the um the company or tell my tell my team to understand where it, where is difference and make amends, maybe pay the differential on what that is, and reconcile that to various um pay receipts we have for relevant states. So this brings to the end of this. I hope this has been quite helpful for everyone. Thanks.